yoga on and off the yoga mat. So today we are off the yoga mat and we are outside. The weather is really starting to hot up so I just thought I would shoot this video outdoors. So welcome to my outdoor office. So today what I want to talk about is um, the practice of your morning routine and it's really important to do a little bit of yoga in the morning and there's also a few other techniques that I want to share with you today um, that you can start incorporating in the morning every day if, if possible. Um, and a routine in Ayurveda is called Dhinacharya and a morning routine is what I'm going to speak about today and obviously I'm a yoga teacher so I you know I do take my time in the morning to slowly wake up and to open up my day and there's a few routines that I do which I'm going to share with you and if you can't do all of the techniques that I'm going to share just by implementing one or two it will give you the strength and the foundation to start your day and trust me, you will have such a better, more productive day um, by just implementing a few of these techniques. So the first thing in the morning, um, what happens for me is I do set myself an alarm clock. Um, you know, ideally I would really like to just wake up just naturally when my body is ready to wake up. Um, but obviously I do have a job and I have things to do. So having an alarm clock just makes sure, ensures that I do wake up on time. Um, and rather than having like a really um, loud buzzing um, alarm clock, I actually have something called the sunrise alarm clock. And this is, um, it's like a light and it starts to shine and it starts to glow about 15 to 20 minutes before you're waking up. And then this light will start to get brighter and brighter and slowly starts to wake you up. And then eventually I even have some sounds coming through. So I have some nature sounds, just like birds and things chirping. Um, and this is my alarm clock and it's just a really good natural way of waking up the body. And then when I do wake up and my eyes open and I'm ready to start the day, the first thing I will do is try to set myself a positive um, thought or a positive or repeat a positive affirmation within my mind. And then this just gives me um, that positive intention to set my day, set myself up for my day, um, and really just stops my mind from going into any negativity. Um, so I really advise you to get into the habit of just saying something positive as soon as you wake up. And it could just be as simple as, today is going to be a good day. So I work with that positive affirmation. I may repeat it to myself a couple of times. And then what I'll do is I might do some light stretching in my bed. I might just give my husband a little hug and a little cuddle. Um, and then I'm ready to wake up. So I get up. And then rather than going just straight into the shower, what I do is I just get some water, some warm water, and I add a little bit of turmeric in there and just take that warm water and turmeric together. Now often in Ayurveda, a lot of people take um, warm water and lemon, which is really good and really cleansing for the body. Um, but I personally don't take that because lemons for me and my body type um, is a, you know, a lot of lemon is not good for me because I'm using my body a lot and um, lemon isn't so great for my joints. But turmeric is really good. It's quite cleansing and healing for the body. So I take some of that. And then after that, I go and I will brush my teeth. So I just brush my teeth as normal. And then from there, I will do my dry skin brushing. So what I do with dry skin brushing is actually just literally just brush my skin with a dry brush. Um, and what this does is it starts to just unclog the pores within the skin and just cleanses the body and also it's really good for your circulation so I find that I actually have quite poor circulation but I find with dry skin brushing it really just allows my blood, blood to flow around the body and improves my overall um, circulation. Um, and then after that what I will do again yet yeah, I haven't yet got into the shower yet I then just take a teaspoon of sesame seed oil and then I take that um, and rather than actually swallowing it, what I do is I just swirl that oil around within my mouth. And this technique is called oil pulling. And oil pulling is a really great way to just draw out the toxins that might have gathered within your mouth overnight. Um, and it really is good for overall oral health. Um, so oil pulling is really great and again here you can do it with sesame seed oil or you can even just use um, coconut oil as well as a really good one. Now in Ayurveda some people, some Ayurvedic practitioners say you know you can do oil pulling for like 
five minutes. Some people say do it for 20 minutes. What I find is works really well for me is I start to do the oil pulling. So I'll take that teaspoon of sesame seed oil, swirl it around my mouth as I'm in the shower. So this is the point where I'll just jump into the shower, have my shower while I'm still swirling the oil through my mouth. I'll then come out of the shower and just spit that oil out um, and just remove all the toxins. And you know what? It just feels amazing within my mouth. Um, so that's a really good technique to implement. Um, and then after that, I just do my moisturizer and moisturize my body. And I also have recently just started doing something called Abhyanga. And this is self-massage. Um, and you, with the self-massage, you do it with oil. So you can either do it before your shower or after your shower, depending on how your body absorbs the oil. But what I've been finding that is really good for me is again, I use sesame seed oil, which is quite grounding. And I just massage it into my feet. And I kind of just use my fingers just to get into all those points within the sole of the feet. And I just found this is really, really nourishing for my body and really quite grounding and settling. Um, and it also feels like a really nice way to just love myself and to connect to my body. Um, and then I also have recently also been starting to just massage into my back. So I just find that sometimes I have a few knots in the morning within my back and within my spine. So again, I, I either use like sesame seed oil or castor oil is really good for the back and for the spine area. So I just massage that into my back. Um, and then from there, then I am now ready to get onto my yoga mat. Now, um, Obviously, I've showered and then I've got onto my yoga mat, but if I know that I'm going to do a heavy practice of yoga, I may actually do my yoga first and then have my shower afterwards. But the reason generally that I naturally get onto the yoga mat after my shower is because yoga is, um, for me, it's a spiritual practice. So when I step onto the yoga mat, I want to be clean. Um, and also with yoga, it's, um, you know, it's the practice of purifying your body. You know, with all the yoga poses and the breathing, you're cleansing and purifying yourself. So it's very similar to actually getting into the shower where you clean your physical body. Yoga is the cleaning of our physical body as well as our internal body as well. You're also clearing your mind and really connecting to your soul. So then I do my yoga and I will do perhaps maybe half an hour of asana posture practice, a little bit more if I have the time. And then I'll also do half an hour of breathing, pranayama, relaxation and meditation. And again, if I have more time, I could actually spend literally nearly two hours, perhaps even pushing it to three hours sometimes doing my yoga and meditation practice. But again, obviously that is quite a lot. So see how much you can implement into your day to day routine even if it's just like 10 minutes, five minutes within the morning, and then building on that as you go along. Now, obviously I understand if you have other commitments and you can't spend that much amount of time, but even if it's just two minutes, it will make a massive difference to your day. So then after I've finished that process, I will then go and have my breakfast. And when I have my breakfast, I have it in silence. The reason is because obviously I've just done my meditation and I've been in silence during my meditation. And I just like to carry on that silence and that practice of solitude and being by myself. And at this point, I still have not turned on my phone and I have not looked at my laptop. Um, so, you know, this is a really good time just to be away from all the technology and just to spend that time with yourself. And then after I've had my breakfast, I will then um, sit down at my desk. I still haven't turned on my phone and I still haven't turned on my laptop. And this is the time that I'll do my journaling. So I do a lot of journaling. Um, I do write down a lot of my thoughts, feelings, emotions. Um, or I also use my journal to plan my day. Um, and I can do a whole other video on journaling, which I'll try and do for you. Um, because it's another big topic that you can explore. And then so I'll do my journaling for perhaps maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then at that point, I am ready to connect with the world and I will open up my phone, I'll open up my laptop, um, or if it's time for me to go and start teaching, I'll go and start teaching. Um, so there you go. That's all the techniques that you can do to implement into your morning practice. And again, like I said, there's a lot there. And if you can't manage to do all of it, it's okay. Just take one or two of those techniques and try to implement that into your practice. And what I would really advise you is that the most important thing is the, the yoga and the meditation. So as much as you can, try and implement that in. All the other stuff can come in slowly as and when you're ready. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and do let me know your thoughts. Um, it would be really great to hear about your morning practice and perhaps maybe I've missed something out that is really important to you, that is a really important part of your practice in the morning. So just let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also do subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with your friends and your family. You can also head on over to yogawithjana.com where you can sign up to my newsletter to receive more news and information from me about yoga. And you can also find out about my upcoming events. I do have a special event coming up on the 26th of June for the International Day of Yoga. So do head on over to my website to, to learn more about that. Um, but otherwise, it was really great to speak to you today and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Namaste.